and hello everyone right now i'm in guizhou province it's its capital guayan city and the first impression this city gave me was not really good because while all my days travels uh, every time I was coming to a new city, new province, I was preparing everything, all the papers, all the PCR tests, but no one asked anything. So when I was coming to Guiyan, I was also thinking, ah, they're not going to check. Well, I arrived and they gave me yellow code. Uh, when, they, when they grabbed me and started like bringing me somewhere without answering my questions, and then I had a challenge with one paper, another paper, blah, 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 I was prepared that they're going to put me in a quarantine again uh, even though I'm coming from a low risk areas I like I, I didn't have any connection with infected people like nothing but in the end they just made me to do PCR tests write a paper call one number and after that I was free to go so then it was a bit difficult to find out the way out from a train station and the way how to get to my hotel um, but yeah, while, so while I was coming to my hotel, I was looking out of the window and like seeing what is happening here. You know, uh, in China there are so many cities and there are always something in common between them. And there's always, always something very unique, which you cannot find in any other city of the world. And this city definitely has something special. And right now I'm just like really walking with big open eyes and like, what's, what's, I, I cannot, right now, I cannot understand what is so special about the city. So, my suggestion we do it together. So, let's go! Right now, I'm in an old city center. I like that they have this kind of river. Most of the time, I see these rivers, like not deep and having, I, I don't know how they call these kind of bridges, only in old, really, towns somewhere in the mountains because the big cities most of the time are built on uh, huge rivers uh, it's already 8 p.m but as you see it's still very bright just if i compare it to shanghai in shanghai it's dark already after seven look at this what they have on the top of their roofs so the buildings i don't know what kind of style is that but on the top of these buildings you see the asian style pagodas looks so cute another very nice thing about the city is that it's not hot here and not humid in shanghai or any other cities i've just been visited visiting it was like plus 33 and super humid so you felt it like plus 40 something and here, no, it's so comfortable. It's the same as last year I was uh, in uh, Kunming. Uh, I don't know why, well, this city is far from the ocean, but here are also mountains. And as far as I know, mountains also can give the humidity. So I really don't know. But when I was reading about the city, uh, someone called the city like a good city to escape from uh, heat in all other, from, from all other cities in China. Yep. <laughs> Another interesting point about the city is that uh, it's very hard to drive here the electric scooters because the city is always ups and downs on the hills and these scooters or cannot handle hills or they even not allowed it to be for example on a big uh, bridges so people driving the motorbikes same as in the city of Chongqing and for me for a person who is crazy about motorbikes it's like a huge plus <laughs> Look how beautiful it is from this side. I don't know what is the name of that tower on the top, but I'm gonna ask what's the name of that place and go and find it because before I haven't seen it on a um, travel travel notices. <laughs> this is what I meant. Like I I cannot understand what is happening in this city because just even look at this architecture. Like the first building looks very European, then the second one is uh, all right, just glass and concrete. Then it looks like very traditional Chinese, but the colors are too bright. And then those other buildings and look how how they look together standing by a side. I don't know, it's so unique, so interesting. I really enjoy the contrast of such an old buildings 
then the modern skyscrapers and something like this and look at these owls football balls or what please somebody tell me what is the architecture style is that looks a bit gothic a bit classic all together if you didn't know in china to see something like this is pretty normal every evening on some squares in every part of china literally same as to see such markets with plastic tables and chairs and some random dudes riding scooters just between the tables i stopped to make a photo of this beautiful bonsai and then i saw the ropes and i decided to follow them and follow and follow and follow and i'm like uh you couldn't tie it to any other building you really needed to tie it up there wow it's first time in my life and i'm walking through a tunnel just inside of the city just to cross the mountain and get to the spot i want to show you this is how it is in the cities with lots of mountains inside of the city i really feel like the city is something from masterpiece Every corner is so interesting for me. And here I came to one important spot of the city yep this is a huge castle it's so <laughs> interesting to see this kind of castle then before we were walking in some not really nice looking places now here you see it's like pretty nice uh and yeah it started raining and thunderstorm is coming nice but anyway this castle was built by some very rich Chinese boy who got his money from his father but uh, and it's supposed to be a hotel but something went wrong and this building just stands there for for years and nothing is happening inside as far as I understood like you, you cannot book the room there you know so yeah <laughs> nice like a Disneyland Hey everyone, it's another day and I'm already climbing a mountain, there is a city, I'm going up, right now you don't understand anything, right now I'm going up to that tower I saw uh, yesterday on a horizon, so let's check it out, how interesting is it and how beautiful the view must be there, I'm almost there, actually it was not, it didn't take that long time for me. Maybe it's because I'm jumping over the two stairs. You already see the view. After doing these stairs, you have a bit of shadow to sit down and breathe. And then there is the tower. So beautiful, together, especially with these clouds. I miss the normal clouds because in Shanghai, the clouds don't form in anything, they just like smashed all over the uh, sky. After choosing such a beautiful place, I want to tell you something more about the city and the province by itself. I think the province is really beautiful and very interesting from historic and archaeological um, point of view, because uh, in this province you can find uh, some places where the ancient people been living thousands, thousands of years ago. Just right now I wrote about uh, 11,000 years ago. There is a cave not far from here. Then another point about this province is that, as you see, there are lots of mountains. And where you see mountains, you also can find caves and waterfalls and some other natural beautiful sites, which I'm so craving to explore. But the problem of this province is that um, it doesn't have a developed um, international traveling system, so you actually, like, you don't see a lot of foreigners coming here even before two, um, 2020, even before a COVID outbreak. 
So this province is more developed inside uh, country uh, tourism. Uh, for Chinese people, maybe it's easier to drive a car from their home to here or they just come in here and they easily rent a car and then from the city they can go to all those uh, famous places because as I was just checking, all the places I want to see are like in 60 kilometers away, 100 kilometers away or even 150 and it's a bit hard to travel by buses. So I will see what I can do about that. But yeah, as I'm saying, it's just a very beautiful and interesting province. Uh, when you come here, same as in Yunnan province, you don't stay that much in the city. You explore the province by itself. What is this province is doing? Well, I was not surprised to see that they are researching the space, doing research about spaces, because I knew even before that in this province you can find the biggest um, something ra radio sphere uh, telescope. I I don't exactly know how how is it called. Um, so it's a huge plate which takes the signals from the space. And a few months ago, I read an article that that uh, telescope in Guizhou just received some suspicious signal from a space. And in 2022, your first thought was like, oh my God, please, no aliens, no, we don't want them. Uh, anyway, then another thing which we are, they are developing in their province is uh, IT technologies and this was the first province for 5G technologies. I was so surprised about that because this is a very deep province. It's not that developed and as for example Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou or Shenzhen which, because Shenzhen is an IT capital of China. Uh, then of course T. I was again surprised because I thought that there are some other provinces which are number one for producing tea, but no, this is again Guizhou province. Um, yeah, this is shortly about the, the Guizhou as province. As about the city, there are six million people living here. Uh, you already saw how the city looks like. Then uh, they also developing the uh, planes as for a military purpose, same for um, just transportation and same as uh, Hunan province, they're doing research and development for uh, uh, space and space shuttles. So really very fascinating. Another important thing about this province is that China in general has 54 minorities and one big not minority group, Hanzhou. And uh, in this province, same as the uh, nearest uh, Yunnan province, there are lots of minorities. And that's why the culture, the local culture, is very diverse. And I, I really see this from the architecture, from the colors they use in their temples. And it's just beautiful. So that was shortly about the city and the province. And let's go and see what else we can find here. I didn't have uh, lunch yet. So I got myself some noodles for 7 renminbi, it's like one dollar and I'm walking somewhere, the rain just stopped, I don't know what was that, <laughs> because the sky was really dark, it, it looked like it was going to rain heavily. I found a local market with lots of fruits and vegetables and groceries, this is how it looks. And there is a university, Main Street, with uh, you know, lots of children learning how to roller skate. And I really don't know what what is this. I even don't know. Actually, I forgot to mention that in Guiyan you see watermelons everywhere and they're huge and this is like this is a quarter from a big watermelon and it's still a lot um, and they don't have seeds as you see like this one has white seeds but most of the time those watermelons I saw on the street they were like completely red without any seed on it 
and they smell crazy, really. You walk in on the street and you hear everywhere the smell of watermelon. I came to Qinglin Mountain Park and this is how it looks like. Lots of mountains. Also, you can meet some animals here. I mean, it's almost like a zoo and monkeys. They are always so funny. I hope they don't have the habits to steal your things as in Thailand. <laughs> it was just another one. I just climbed on the mountain here. I don't know how high is it, not that much. But yes, you see mountains, behind mountains are skyscrapers. Uh, oh, where is somebody else? Uh, I don't know what was this for, looks like shelter. <laughs> Stairs to nowhere. <sighs> It's scared when you're walking and suddenly see a wild animal walking around. Yeah, it's monkey and sometimes they can be aggressive. So I'm walking in the forest and looking at all of this garbage here. I really don't know who's more monkeys in this place. Hello. Hello. Little fellow. I came to such an interesting place with such a huge rock and so interesting to watch the layers and here you see the sticks <laughs> supporting the first it looks like it's supporting this huge rock but they're supporting the lowest layers so they don't go one by one falling down because if they do then the whole rock with all these characters will fall and here i came to the highest spot of this park and this is what oh my god it started raining nice <laughs> uh oh i literally walked into someone's garden and yeah high scrapers skyscrapers sorry and i'm continue walking i could even say that i'm somewhere in hong kong it really looks alike as in from Victoria Peak. So I was just there right now, you see that rock? And one man just told me that this is one of the eight famous uh, sightseeing viewpoints in whole Guizhou province. So yeah, this is a must-see place. And I'm on the top of the mountain. Look how beautiful is this. And this is an old city, and here we can see how through the mountains they did tunnels and huge bridges like this to connect the city with a new business center. So that part is a new city. So beautiful. And since I don't want to make my videos too long, here I would like to end it and see you next video about Kuei Yang and Kuei Zhou. Bye bye!